Good day, everyone. This is uh, Chris, the Ancient Scholar. So today I'm going to be uh, answering a question that was asked of me uh, through private messaging, and this is uh, in relation in regards to ventilator management, from what I gather. And, and the crux of the question is uh, based around uh, apparently this this person's in school, and it was asked, "How would I decrease carbon dioxide uh, without increasing ventilation?" So the um, question was, "How do I decrease CO2?" Okay, um, but I do not, uh, I want no change to VE, minute ventilation. Okay, uh, I'll go ahead and throw up the formula for minute ventilation. VE equals our tidal volume times our rate, our respiratory rate. Uh, the product of respiratory rate tidal volume is minute ventilation. It can be in milliliters or liters. Generally, we'll convert that to liters per minute. Uh, so here's my take on the question. Uh, minute ventilation is ultimately what we use to decrease our carbon dioxide. If I want to decrease carbon dioxide, um, I'm going to have to have more gas going in and out of my lungs. I'm going to need to be able to blow off, in essence, more CO2. And now, the way that we would do that is by increasing minute ventilation. Okay, fair enough. So... Um, I think someone we could we could say hey that's probably the end of the question and uh, I'm not sure that it is because when we look at minute ventilation um, we need to realize that that's not all there is to the story that VE equals VT times F uh, or our frequency the tidal volume times the frequency that's not all there is to the story because when we look at minute ventilation we need to ask ourselves this question is that the amount of gas going in and out of the alveoli per minute is that what we uh, call our alveolar our alveolar our alveolar minute ventilation and, and clearly the question is or the answer to the question excuse me is no that is not all uh, that is not alveolar minute ventilation. That's just the amount of gas that's delivered, um, in this case by the ventilator, uh, per minute. That does not tell us that, uh, that, that that's a gas going in and out of the alveoli. And we have something, we have a concept known as dead space. We have dead space. And uh, we have two types of dead space. We have... Uh, we have our anatomical dead space, okay, and we have mechanical dead space. We have mechanical dead space, okay. Uh, anatomical dead space is dead space that's associated with the respiratory system. That basically is um, all the gas in our conducting airways, our upper airway, um, our large airways, and our non uh, our non gas exchange uh, airways. Basically, if gas exchange isn't occurring in a certain part of the respiratory tract, we just call that the, the conducting airway. Um, all the air that's in those airways is not, um, is not in, it's not in the alveoli and it's not in the, it's not actively exchanging gas. Um, that's anatomical uh, dead space. And anatomical dead space in a normal person, person can be calculated at, at about one milliliter per pound. One milliliter per pound of ideal body weight. Okay. So that is anatomical dead space. Mechanical dead space is uh, the dead space uh, that, that we add generally through the ventilator circuit, the endotracheal tube, uh, HMEs, and so on. And that can actually be quite significant in some cases. So that's um, what we add. We add uh, when we put somebody on a ventilator. Okay, that includes a circuit, so on and so forth. So uh, getting back to the original question... Um, can we decrease CO2 without increasing VE, uh, minute ventilation? I would say, uh, yes, we can in a certain sense that um, I can decrease my dead space. I can't really do a whole lot about anatomical dead space, but I can decrease my mechanical dead space um, on my ventilator. Maybe I can shorten the circuit, take out the HME, some, something on the lines of that. I can decrease the mechanical dead space and that decrease in mechanical dead space will not affect my overall minute ventilation. 
But what it will do is it will increase alveolar minute ventilation because more of what's being delivered, our tidal volume in this case, our ventilator is delivering a tidal volume, I will lose less of that tidal volume uh, to mechanical dead space. So my answer to the question would be, uh, yes, we can in, in a sense that um, the overall minute ventilation will not change, but if I decrease mechanical dead space, my alveolar minute ventilation will increase. So I suppose the answer to, uh, my answer to that question would be, uh, well, it depends on what you mean by minute ventilation. Are we talking overall minute ventilation or alveolar minute ventilation? There, there are subtle differences, uh, but, but they, they are different concepts. In the case of um, uh, overall minute ventilation, there's really not a whole lot you can do. If you want to decrease CO2, you're going to have to increase your minute ventilation. However, if we're talking alveolar minute ventilation, uh, we can, in fact, decrease our mechanical dead space, and that will improve alveolar minute ventilation without changing um, our overall minute ventilation, because I'm not changing the respiratory rate or the tidal volume. I'm just decreasing the amount of mechanical dead space. Uh, so that would be my answer uh, to the question in this case. Uh, if if that answer, you know, is I don't know what um, the list of answers are available, but that would probably be the, the the best answer I could give in this case. Okay, guys. Hopefully that uh, makes sense. And as always, take care. Uh, thanks for hanging in there.